welcome back people back again with second year pro sorry scorches guard connor cashel if you did miss part one check out the description below had a lot of fun chopping it up with my guy clearly he hasn't been in the uk long enough once again a massive thank you to everyone who sent in their questions we'll be answering them on this episode do make sure you check out the video we did together on his channel also below in the description finally if you're a high school player coach or even a parent and want to know more about the process of becoming a collegiate athlete be sure to check out our ebook under the radar the link will be in the description below if you are new here and want to see more content like this make sure you click that big red button and subscribe to the channel that's enough from me here is part two When did you start playing basketball? Man, I started playing basketball from what I can remember, maybe three or four, man. Always at an early age. I played every sport, though. Basketball wasn't even my, like, main sport. It was actually baseball. Crazy. Wow. Um, then one day, I played baseball, football, everything. I played rollerblade, hockey, all that. One day, cold day in Atlanta, too cold for me. I said, I can't do that no more. Too cold. I play basketball and I stuck with it ever since uh, high school when I moved to Chicago. I never played another sport other than basketball again. Hey, you know? Um, Yeah, man, it did. Uh, I don't know if it's accurate. I got to do some more research, but my gym teacher always told me the more sports you play, the better you get at individual sports. Just... Um, but that's an interesting point you raised because you said age three or four, you were introduced to the game of basketball. Early age, man. From In the UK? Remember, yeah man like most people they they start at like 13 and you're playing catch up at that age yeah it's really late big sure. time like you probably had your first officiated game before the age of 10. yeah exactly probably mm -hmm. when i was five or six That's we had true. church league sorry yeah so st anne's yeah yeah but that's um that's normal in the U.S., like across the board, right? Yes, it is. I would say so indeed, yeah. Like, you have U14s that don't know the rules. Really? Yeah. Like, I feel that's a big part of where we're going wrong in the U.K. Um, there's not enough emphasis on starting the game earlier, but also the level of attention it requires at that age. Right. Um, and I think that's going to be holding the, the sport back in the country. Um, so now nah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's very important to start. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the NBA, every 90% of the players probably started pretty, pretty young. Maybe the Greek freak started a little late, but look how skilled he is. He put in the work he dedicated. Um, I read this book is called the outlier. It talks about the 10,000 hour rule. It, take, it takes about 10,000 hours to master or perfect a certain craft or skill. So putting those fundamentals at a, at a younger age with every sport, I know it helped me a lot. Um, and you can kind of tell, you know, when a player is raw, what that means is like, may not know the game yet, maybe a step, you know what I'm trying to say? So that, that, that getting that, the word out about basketball and kind of pushing that, for at earlier age for England could definitely help promote it and help players a lot. And I think that's something, you know, True Vision could, could implement as you're already doing. And I mean, I've been talking with a lot of guys, you know, I love England, I love Surrey, I love Creon, I love Sharks, Tebow, we talk to them all the time, Mike Tuck, about how even American people like myself can help grow the sport in England, you know? I think the BBL is a great league, great, organization and it already had it just has so it even has more potential than it is already already is right now you know and that's what makes it a blessing to be a part of tiny 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 small part so we gotta do leave that leave that legacy and impact man but yeah now let's get into some of the questions that um our followers asked let's do it right let's get into it connor casual q a 
First question from Toby Holmes. How did it feel to get your first offers? Man, Toby, it was a surreal, real moment for myself because, you know, while you're in your, your process and your journey, you don't really think about, you know, getting the offers. You just put in the work, put in the work, put in the work, put in the work. And you get the letters and you get maybe a phone call, a couple phone calls in communication, but to actually get that first offer was like, man, insane. It was absolutely insane. And I can tell you a little backstory. We went to the Loyola Ramblers coach, our Loyola Ramblers camp as a team, me and Stevenson, and we played there, played a couple of Chicago teams. I did pretty well. I've been in contact with Coach Moser for a while. And after the camp, we're walking back and he pulls me over and tells him, give me a scholarship. Jalen hears, he's freaking out, tells everybody on the bus and everyone's freaking out. Coach Ambrose freaking out, my coach, high school coach. So that moment was, you know, something I'll never forget. Something I'll never forget. Wow, that's a great story, you know. Going to camps, like, it's not talked about enough. And, you know, you being in the US, you've got access to do that. Would you say that UK players should aspire to research those camps? Because a lot of people feel they already have an idea in mind of what players they want. So is it worth going to those camps as a UK kid, do you feel? So I have, I have two, two views on it. So there's two different type of camps. The first camp is a player elite camp, which if the coach is interested in you, ask you to come. I never went to those. I uh, just didn't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't feel like it was my step or my path. And it. I think if you people do get advice, they should definitely go. I think it's very, very, very important though, if your coach, like when I was at Stevenson, my high school, we would go to summer camps that teens were, were interested in, in rephrase it we would go to summer camps where colleges or universities was interested in either Jalen myself uh, Matt Johnson Justin Smith who went to Indiana um, we would go to the Wisconsin camp and they were looking at me they would go to Michigan State camp and looking at Jalen and it gives the coaches opportunity to look see the players see how they act on and off the court they're there for hours talk to them without, you know, cause that, that's not really a live period. So coaches can't talk to uh, um, players. And, but if you go to the camp, they can sneak it. Oh, we like you, we're interested, keep working, things like that. So I think that notoriety and having a, a, a like a coach, Coach Ambrose or Stevenson, that name to, to give you the opportunity to show out in front of those coaches is, is huge, 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 huge. My sophomore year, I think I was 15 just from playing on NLP, playing Stevenson, obviously playing with a great player while we're winning, while we were winning, which is very, very, very important. Brought a lot of attention to Stevenson. So college coaches came, um, the traction came to everybody who was on the team and played well at that tournament, played aggressive, played hard, had fun, and then afterwards, Coach Moser had a conversation with myself face to face and they gave me the official offer. So it was a blessing, definitely, man. It was a def I still have that every time I think about it, I got a smile. So I think I had a 25 to 30 plus offers. Um, my battle my battle was, I was kind of a, coming out of high school, colleges, I myself didn't believe this, obviously so you gotta have faith and believe in yourself. Colleges thought I was a, like a tweener, like. Some mid-majors thought I was going to be a high major player, like can go high major. Some high majors thought so too, but they're like, okay, can he guard the two? Can he guard the three at the high major, high major level? So I only had a two or three high major interests. And, you know, as that, that as, a, as a competitor and athlete was like, dang, now I got to go and show them, like show these high major coaches and show these high level uh, um, athletes and things like that, what I, what I can do do and things like that so it kind of drove me going into rice you know not to knock mid majors or d2 d3 but you know playing with with Jalen and saw is we always hold each other accountable and, and we want the best for each other so we're fighting and fighting and fighting against each other and we want to all grow at the same time so it kind of puts a chip on your shoulder regardless of where you go and where you end up 
And I think a lot of players can take that chip and, and play with it for the rest of their lives, you know? Because everyone's gonna have doubters. Right. Ron James has doubters. Michael Tom Brady has that, you know what I'm saying? So that 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 blessing also helped me, you know, having mid-major, 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 mid-major. So just one thing, plain and simple, I'm gonna make it for you. Playing off the ball and playing with good players. That's the only thing I try to focus on. How can you be effective without the ball? And how can you be effective with two, three other stars on your team? If you're on the court playing 25 plus minutes a game, that's an opportunity. It doesn't matter what your position is. So figure out catch, catch and catch and shoot, catch rip throughs off the dribble, catch and finish. Not a lot of players are gonna give that get that green light to dribble 50 times and, and things like that. A couple of keys is number one, you gotta be a good free throw shooter. Like you you if you that coaches can't take your point guard out the game because you can't shoot free throws so you uh, practice that number two is a vocalist and a leader so you know like and, and if not everyone's a vocalist so how can you control the game as a point guard with the ball in your hands you got to call sets you got to know what's working you got to have the high iq i watch chris paul for that if his big man scores one time he's going right back right three it's just making your teammates better putting them into position where it makes it easier for them um, to succeed, um, if that's giving them two or three open threes instead of having it for them to create for themselves um, and, and expanding that energy. So free throws, uh, vocalist and leader control the game, and number three, get your teammates better. Being self-aware of what's going around in the team and your team, um, bonding off the court, checking in on guys, um, not related to basketball, things like that. Most importantly, watching film. I think watching basketball is very, very important if you want to increase your IQ, increase your understanding of the game, increasing literally everything. You mentioned that you've lived the, the professional athlete lifestyle from young and it was instilled into you from a young age. Now, you don't appear to be a regretful person in any way. But is there anything that you would tell a 13-year-old Conor Cashel that would allow him to have more success at this stage right now? Yeah, I, I wish I could tell him how to properly prepare for a game mentally. And number two, just like playing free and letting go of everything, just having fun. Sometimes I would be so... I uh, wanted so bad that I would psych myself out and get nervous and things like that, and I'd have to find a way, but but now it's just like, okay, every player, every 13-year-old is on their path, no matter what happens, like, you gotta understand that if you believe you're gonna get somewhere, the path is yours, the journey is yours, and enjoy that journey. And that sums it up, Q&A with Connor Cashel himself. Appreciate you coming on the show. A lot of insight, a lot of information. I learned a lot myself. We hope you learn a lot. If you want to see more content like this on the channel, please comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe. We out. My oh, man, appreciate you.